Look at them little beauties. And it's quarter to eight and it's a Wednesday morning. Missed the uh, uh, the uh, home brew Wednesday uh, malarkey. But uh, let's do a little twizzle. There we go. Right, what am I doing today? I'm going to be doing another brew. I've got to get the brews going. You see I've got a lot of brews. Uh, not brews is, a brews. Uh, it's for the lad's wedding when it's uh, coming along in May, end of May. So I've got to get a few brews going, that's why I'm brewing a lot. So today I'm up early and, well, early-ish, I'm going to get the water in my watsits and uh, start a brew day. And also, the old fast doing, um, I had a big question from one of me. Uh, me, me, me followers if you like and I'm going to try and answer a few questions which should be fun says a noble gruel any road up let's go and get some water in the what's it and uh, crack on with a brew day <laughs> Just got out of bed from the missus. <laughs> just had a cup of tea actually, lads. Settle down. Now, the thing is, um, I've done a few bits and bobs in here as well, so let's do uh, yet another twizzle uh, if we can. There's a twizzler. There we go. Now, look. Hey, we're <laughs> the electric brewery, isn't it? The electric brewery. Let's switch on. I'll see if it works. So, flick that on. All that does is switches me uh, me uh, my lights on. Don't go out with the uh, electric current. Yeah, what well you're into that lot. Now I'm going to need a bit of help with this little baby here. This Sestos. I've been told I need one of those to control my boil. So uh, yeah. So there you go, lads. Uh, what am I doing now? Oh yeah. Let's put some water in the old what's it. So. Switch on there, and here we go. And I've just been watching Mark from uh, Overdog Brewery. He's had a good uh, day on Sunday, so it spurred me on a little bit, Mark. And uh, I've not got the old. Uh, I want the water thingy to stop the water from overflowing. But what I do do, little tip here, man. Put your fingers in like that until you fill the water, and it's at the right level cheap. Right, the HLT is full. I've done the old fingers, it got wet. Switch off tap. Right, I've got a whack in here, eight, just over eight uh, litres of good old British water. And here we go. And here's my measuring device. Two nicks equals a litre. So we've got two Four, six, plenty. Okay, this is my new system. I've got the old uh, ST1000 at the top. That's going into this baby. But it's only to measure the temperature. It's not controlling the heat at all. It's just the bit at the end uh, measuring the temperature. I've got the middle one, which is measuring the temperature and controlling the temperature. And what it is, it's on the pipe and on this, the wizard thing. And uh, oh, ah, I put this on as well. This plastic bit here. <coughs> See how much water's in, but there's not much water in there at the moment. <coughs> <coughs> Me two switches for the pump, pump one and pump two. So better get cracking. So so all systems go. So let's see what happens. I'll be back when everything's warmed up. Gonna have another cup of tea with the missus in bed. I 
So, there we go. So, I'll just get it cracking. Okay, um, hope you can hear what I'm saying with the uh, the brew whacking away behind me. It's ticking away nicely. I've got it uh, uh, sort of mashing now at uh, 66 degrees. And uh, I think we're going okay. Uh, well insulated, which I think is uh, quite a money saving uh, thingy. Any road up. Look at this. <laughs> Take a look at that. That is <coughs> a personal email to myself, sorry about the cough, from a gentleman called John Doe. And um, basically, is saying that he's been watching my channel for quite some time and seems to think that I know what I'm talking about a bit. <laughs> well, I don't know an awful lot, but I'll, I'll, I'll give it my best shot. Basically, he's saying that at present he, he bottles his beer and is looking at his bottles and, and uses the kegs. I assume those plastic kegs, uh, the pressure kegs. And uh, I went down the same route as that, and uh, fairly good for a start, but quite expensive with the little uh, aerosol things that you plug in the top. But all well, the same, they work quite well. But he was asking the uh, the best way to, to go to the kegerator system, and uh, he noticed that I've got a fridge freezer in the other shed that I used to put a couple of kegs in, and. Um, what I do want to get across um, at the Kanjo is the fact that you can't really use it for a fermenting fridge, a fridge freezer, because if you're controlling uh, the fridge, you're going to be controlling the freezer as well, so that's going to go up and down like a bloody yo-yo aeroplane. <laughs> we'll let that pass. Any road up, you can't really use a fridge freezer for, for fermenting. Uh, all I use it for is to keep the, the beer cool. Probably too cool for my liking, but it, it, uh, I'd rather have it cooler than uh, lukewarm in the summer. So anyway, any road up, I digress a bit. It was asking the best way to uh, uh, go forward with the, uh, the, the, the kegging and kegerators, etc. Well, I've done several um, vlogs on uh, how I set up my fermenting fridge and goodness knows what. So you, you you can have a look at those if you if you want to have a look at the fermenting fridge. But regarding kegging, um, I got the kegs uh, from a company in Ireland. I think they're still selling them, and I think they're about forty quid each. And I'll put the link down below so you can have a look. And they were very quick, very good and the kegs were, were great and uh, the, the gas that I decided to go for is I got the largest gas that I could get, cost about 50 quid um, and a regulator off eBay, there's quite a few regulators on eBay I'll try and find one and put a link again down below but um, yeah, yeah you, I think the best idea for, for, for kegging is to get the, uh, the best gas that you can afford basically. I think every time I come to fill that up it'll be about 20 to 30 quid. I ain't filled it up yet, I've had it about six months or so and it still seems plenty in it. But uh, rather than go for the diddy ones, go for a, a, a bigger one. And, uh, and a, a decent regulator and then just set it up. I bought these flow taps, I'm still uh, messing about with the uh, controlling the flow taps, I, I, I did a video last week about it. So yeah, what else does he says? I do ever get confused when it comes to all the stuff needed that this requires. If, if they're accurate the shop you'll probably get ripped off, not really, I don't think you will John, they're not too bad, most of them are home brewers anyway. Uh, yeah, but get a couple of corny kegs or one corny keg. I'll put the link down below. Uh, get the the biggest tank you can afford for the CO2, 
and the regulator. I'll try and find a link for that as well. Uh, the corny kegs, um, the quick release valves I've gone for, not the peg ones. Uh, the Irish uh, shop who sell them do them, and they're quite good. Uh, what length of tubing do you require for the gas and, and, and beer lines? I'll go for about a couple of metres on each so that there's plenty of room to move them in and out and it should stop the foam a little bit apparently. Um, how do I utilise the old fridge top and bottom? How do you stop it from freezing when turned on? This is it you see, you're going for a fridge freezer so all you can do is just use a fridge at the top which you can regulate with the thermostat and get cold beer and the freezer you can whack your ops in to keep them nice and uh, fresh. Also later adding taps to the outer of the uh, outer of the kegerator, any idea of the cost? I've put a link uh, John in me uh, in my last uh, video for, for the taps they were about I think about 27 quid each something like that. Uh, he says he can't see himself ever going into grain because he's not got the space. It, you don't need a lot of space for grain. There's loads of uh, uh, videos out there that shows you how to, to do grain brews without having a lot of, of workspace. Ah, so yeah, it's a real nice long... Um, oh, it, it's not John Doe. They must have borrowed somebody's uh, login. It's uh, Stuart and he lives just outside of uh, Glasgow. So, I hope that helps a bit, Stuart. Um, it says here, if I begin with a, a picnic type uh, tap dispenser, can I use it on the kegs? Or would I need three of them? You can use the picnic type ones, they're not that great to be honest, I don't find anyway. They're not uh, very, uh, they're all right for picnics, but I wouldn't use them on a regular basis. You'd probably be best to buy the bullet and get a decent tap. You can interchange them from one to the other, but you'll get a mix of beer you know, unless you drain it through, I don't mind a pint of mixed anyway, so any road up, I'll get back to me brewing and uh, hope that helps. It's been suggested by um, a Gary White um, that I need to get hold of one of these little gizmos, a Sestos, and basically what I need this for is to control the boil because I've been losing about seven litres for an hour and a half boil and this little baby should be able to control the boil now I've had all manner of problems trying to set this bloody thing up the instructions that came with it are Chinese and uh, it's a very bad translation into English um, there's so many bits and bobs you can alter on it and uh, it's really awkward but the very nature of the thing is the fact that it can uh, predict if you like when to switch the element off and when to switch it back on again by programming it itself really it's doing, it does an automatic program and it realises after a while that you need to switch off the uh, the, the element at about 98 instead of 100 and switch it back on again when it's uh, just falling below 100 and, and that type of thing and it judges it by God knows what but I've set that up but going back um, I had all manner of problems with the uh, the wiring of it I've got one of these I mean, have you ever seen how it's so bloody stupid? A double wire going to uh, the uh, the sensor that goes into the into the brew. Double wire, I don't like that. But these two wires, they're connected to two terminals. But then you've got to bridge one wire from one terminal to another to get it to work which was silly and it took me ages to work that one out and now I'm trying to get work it so I can set this thing up to manual and this is where I'm struggling at the moment I've got it set to 100 degrees so the uh, the thing will flick on and off on and off but I don't want it to do that I want it to sort of stop it at 100 by reducing the amount of uh, time it's on and off if you get me meaning 
any road up, I'll have a look at that later on and we'll fi figure it out together, shall we? Okay, I've just mashed out now. I've just got the temperature up to uh, almost 78. Well, it is 78. And uh, I've dropped the, uh, the little Cestos probe into the, uh, the liquor that's coming out. So uh, it's measuring the temperature okay. And uh, basically what I'm doing, I'm draining a little bit of water out of the hot liquor tank. That is going through the arms coil and going into the mash tun. And I've got a little tube on here now, look. And you can see it. And then I try to keep the level on that on the plastic tube. So it's trickling out of there down and uh, into there and I want to make it last about an hour. I've put the uh, oil in the bag there so that I can put my ops in and keep it fairly clean. And we're doing well I am getting a, a real gentle uh, boiling uh, roll here which is really good and uh, I must thank um, Gary for his help in suggesting this. Um, the Cestos or Cestos? Let's see if I can focus on Yeah, I've got it onto manual mode and I've got it coming on 84% which seems to just settle it right. Every time that out button comes on the heater element comes on in the uh, in the boiler and then it will stop on a little while, get the roll going, and then it will switch off again. And then the boil just settles down again, and quickly it's back on again. So I can make some adjustments on that from 84% is the how long it's on for for how long it's off. So. Yeah, and also the level I've been on for about, I guess, half an hour now, and you can see the black mark, the ring, it's hardly gone down in it, whereas before it had uh, nosedive. So I'll be interested to see how many litres I've lost after an hour and a half boil. Another couple of minutes, and it'll be flame out time, and uh, there's my quill, <laughs> steamed up. Well, I've had a good day, everything's gone alright, I've cleaned all my gear up and the, uh, the sun's shining now. Lovely, look at that. Henry the Under. Yeah, so uh, really good days it happens. Um, I've uh, worked out the loss on the boiling malarkey and I've got three litres loss in one and a half hours as opposed to seven litres, which I think is pretty damn good. However, it has knocked my figures about, so I've got to jiggle it about again because obviously more evaporation, stronger beer. So I've got to jiggle my figures. I've got more litres, <laughs> so weaker beer. So uh, back to the drawing board with that one. But cracking day, so thanks for watching the old fart and thanks for your help, um, the two guys that helped me on the old uh, cestos. Ses